everyone, my name is Yeji Kim and today I'm here with Dina Boyages at the Standing Rock Gallery here in Hudson. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. So well, let's start with the history of the shop and we can talk about the name. So where did the name Standing Rock Gallery come from? So actually Standing Rock is an actual place in Kent, Ohio. Mm -hmm. It's a rock in the middle of the Cuyahoga River. Um, it is was used um, Native American times between tribes in the area for council meetings oh. and also to leave messages for one another people traveling up and down the river mm -hmm. so it's actually it's a place yeah. it's a thing it's a very historic story too and um, you mentioned that there is a shop in Kent or the old shop was in Kent do you want to talk a little bit about that sure mm -hmm. um, Standing Rock exists existed 40 years ago in Kent, Ohio, by the Standing Rock, which is how mm -hmm. it got its name. Mm -hmm. um, it was started by three people, Kay and Earl McFarland and John Herring. Mm -hmm. um, it was a stained glass studio um, originally, and um, they taught classes, and they themselves were trained in Europe, um, where they got their skills and came back to the States and started their gallery. So, so, so this is a reopening of the shop, correct? So they moved here in 1994. Mm -hmm. um, they moved the gallery space from Kent to Hudson, um, and we've been in this building since um, 1994. So um, at that time, they still were producing glass themselves and doing repairs for stained glass. Mm -hmm. And then as they slowed and that's it was labor intensive. They did big installations of like church windows and so big scale items mm -hmm. and so it was hard work and so right. once they started to scale back on that type mm -hmm. of work that they were they were doing uh, Kay brought in more artists from around the country and people that she admired and so that part of the business grew as they sort of scaled back their glass making. So what kind of renovations did you guys do to this shop in particular when you owned it? So this is a historic home. It's mm -hmm. not on the register, but it has been here for, you know, um, over 100 years. Oh, wow. um, yes, it was built <laughs> on. It's got a storied history like many of the old homes in mm -hmm. Hudson. Um, so when we got the space, um, basically we did cosmetic uh, updates. We pulled up um, carpets to expose the old wide plank floors and fix the walls. Um, we also opened the second floor for the holidays only mm -hmm. where we do also put uh, holiday installations, decorations, trees. That We have a lot more space upstairs. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So do you have any like specific reason for you owning the shop? Like is it your love of art or? So uh, I was a studio art minor uh, in mm -hmm. college. Um, I've always had sort of a creative um, part to my myself mm -hmm. um, I was a customer of the store for a long oh, time wow yes and um, so loved it here mm -hmm. um, and then when they started when they closed um, for a, a short period of time I was friendly with the people that worked here and I, mm -hmm. I reached out to them to make sure everybody was okay yeah and so from that point on we sort of started talking and they asked if I might be interested in taking over at the shop and it wasn't hard to decide yes because mm -hmm. I loved it so much and I know that the people that I've met through opening reopening the shop or keeping the shop open really mm -hmm. um, they've been just we're so grateful to have an institution like this here it's been here for so long and so much a part of the community mm -hmm. so yeah I love that you're a customer here too before yeah. mm -hmm. so now this is my favorite question because I love hearing about this um, what is your goal and purpose with the Standing Rock Gallery so it's the Standing Rock Gallery is so much more than just a shop. Mm -hmm. um, we really, um, it's a lo more than buying one of a kind gifts for people you love and all that kind of stuff, of course. But we do really have a community here of the people that shop here and come in. Um, a lot of people come in to get cheered up. Mm -hmm. um, they come in for conversation. Uh, a lot of us know one another through the shop. So, you know, it's a follow-up question. How are your kids doing? How is college drop-off? <laughs> so it's a relationship um, when you come into the store. People mm -hmm. care about one another. It's evident. Um, and I often think, working the front counter, that it would be really great if everybody could meet one another because oh, it's such yeah. a great group of people. Mm -hmm. it's, shop yeah, here. it's always good to have, like, a personal connection with. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And so to touch in on some uh, specifics, you mentioned this before, but um, could you explain a little bit about the holiday or the seasonal decorations and themes you guys sure. do? Mm -hmm. So uh, the holiday has always been a big event. A holiday open house has always been a big event here. Mm -hmm. uh, this year it's November 2nd. It's usually the first weekend of November. It's when we close the gallery a week prior and we 
completely transform inside and outside the gallery to reflect the holidays. So as I mentioned before, um, Kay had never opened the upstairs, but we have now opened the upstairs for holiday decorations and shopping and stuff. And so it gives us a chance to really stage things and do kind of some new, neat and different um, you know, decorations and, and displays. Um, for holiday items, as well as we bring in a whole bunch of um, other artists and uh, bigger scale work that we can then display upstairs as well. It's, it's more room for more products. <laughs> so let's start by talking about some of the items here. Um, why don't we start with the jewelry over here? Perfect. Uh, this is a jewelry artist from Virginia. She's originally from Maine. Um, she hand makes everything in her studio in Virginia, everything, all the beadwork and everything. Her inspiration for this season has been uh, the West. She's using more turquoise and more earth tones in her um, work this at this time. Mm -hmm. um, this is a these are you know amazing pieces to layer. Um, which is kind of trendy at the moment. Um, and so uh, this is a quite a popular line with us also for the mm -hmm. price point. Yeah, I love the colors on the necklaces and everything. Yeah, yeah. they're really pretty. They're fun to wear too. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. All right, and then um, we have some hummingbirds up here. These are some of my favorite things in the shop. Do you want to talk a little bit of about Of course. Those? So this was an artist that we met um, in a show. Um, we were drawn into her studio or into her booth. Uh, by the hummingbirds. Um, she uses a lot of color in her work while she's, these are all hand blown glass. Um, so the color actually helps to accent the movement in the piece. Mm -hmm. um, she in particular, when I was selecting, you know, the hummingbird, I had the choice of how she wanted to make them. Mm -hmm. And so she said, we well, you know, how do you want the beak? How do you want the tail? Mm -hmm. I liked a pointier beak and a flared tail. And it was just really cool to be able to choose something so so specific. Yeah, I like the personal touches. Yeah. So we have this beautiful display that you guys made yourselves, correct? Yes. All right. So this is, uh, we call her Kate Moss. Uh, she was one of the displays that we used for the holiday open house, or holiday season last year. We made these forms um, to display ornaments. We replaced her evergreen skirt with flowers for the springtime. <laughs> Um, this fall for our Pinktober um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month mm -hmm. um, celebration, um, we're doing Gallery Hop on October 4th, and then she will now carry hearts um, for donations that we accept for the Gathering Place, which is in Akron. Oh, I like that idea. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that's a really cool concept. And then moving over here, we have, you guys have a seasonal display, right? Yes. So um, being from Boston, uh, this particular artist holds a special place in our heart. He's from Boston. Um, this is an a artist that I continue to go back to. I've not seen anybody do stems quite as beautifully as he does. Um, but it, again and again, he adds more colors. Um, but his flair really, for me anyway, is the stem. I think they're beautiful. Yeah, these are really yeah. pretty. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then the other thing on this table that we have brought in for the first time this year are the gourds. Um, they are made by a family in Pennsylvania. They grow the gourds and they actually laser cut them. Oh. Um, so yeah, they're really creative, whimsical, fun. Um, yeah. They're lit, which is kind of neat, but just something kind of fun to bring in for decoration for the holiday. And then these witches and these cats, are, are they the same person that makes them? Yes, that's okay. the same studio, same family, mm -hmm. same firm. All right, and then moving over this way. Yes. You guys have this um, two glass menorahs, is that right? Yes, so this is an actually glass, I would consider glass sculpture, mm -hmm. um, which is a little different than some of the other pieces that we have in the shop. This artist is from California. She does beautiful work. It's very modern. Um, depending on the angle that you look at it, you can see the color that she uses in the glass for accent. Um, yeah, but like it's really mm -hmm. beautiful. When you're looking at it straight on, it just looks clear, but then if you go to the side, you get all the, um, all the different colors, which is yes, really yes. cool. And her work has been featured in shows, and um, mm -hmm. she's gotten awards for her pieces. So they're beautiful. Yep. So this is a smaller section of pottery in the store, just kind of two little shelves of it. Uh, this particular artist is from Vermont. Um, her pieces are inspired um, with a sort of a good spirit, um, energy. Um, she likes to bring words and images in that sort of are positive, positivity. Yeah, like um, into her work. believe, courage, thank you. Yeah. yeah, miracles. She's um her 
her um, pieces are kind of neat because they're a little bit ergonomic. So on this particular piece, she's got two little pinches here for your fingers where you pour your creamer. Um, on her, um, also on her teacups here, she's got a little indentation for your thumb. So you can kind of hug your teeth, which we all do when it's freezing in February. <laughs> so that's a really nice little feature to her piece. And of course, everything's handmade, so nothing's quite the same, which makes it even better. So yeah. when you give these to people, they're just one of a kind, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, this is another studio. Um, this is a potter um, from Canada. Um, his pieces are a little bit different and you know make really nice gifts as well. Um, they're a little bit more, um, I would say, for the, for the host and hostess. Um, his pieces um, come in the glaze colors that you know are just kind of you know white to go mm -hmm. with everything. Um, his, his glazes are nice and his shapes are kind of neat. Yeah, like if you look at this one, it, it, like it looks like fabric, but yes. I love the shapes and textures to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does a really nice job. And so, like I said, for the host and hostess, these shapes are really great and utilitarian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, are um, a lot of your products from the U.S. or are they from Canada? We have a mixture of, of everything. I think um, we do, most of our artists are based in the U.S. Some are quite local. Mm -hmm. um, and then some are from Canada, like we mentioned, the glass maker for the mm -hmm. hummingbirds and, and this particular potter. Um, and then around the holidays, we do bring in some fair trade, but it's very small. All right, so I know you're all about using and repurposing, so these are a cool item to have, right? Yes, so this is actually a candle uh, studio that is made in a barn, um, mm -hmm. hence the name. Um, those pieces are made with a silicone top and a mm -hmm. glass milk bottle bottom. After you're finished burning them, you can reuse the uh, bottle and the top is watertight. And so we actually reuse ours, our burned candles, we reuse the bottle for filling water into our diffusers and things like that. But I certainly think you could use it as for a creamer, creamer and sugar yeah. on the table. It's kind of fun and it's really important to reuse it at this time. Yeah. So. And they smell amazing too. You guys have one burning right yeah. here. And Really They're good. amazing. We smelled every smell they had yeah. when we were buying them. They were just, it's, it, they really do smell very good. Mm -hmm. so. And then we have a bit more pottery here. Sure. So I mentioned um, in a, the other, um, when we were talking about the pottery over there, that we do carry from the United States and from Canada. This particular potter is actually very local to us. She's from Peninsula. Mm -hmm. um, her influence, um, you can see, is Asian from her Asian travels, her teapot, um, the shape of her lids. Um, she does beautiful work. Her work has a lot of throw lines, which I particularly love just to kind of show even more so that it's handmade. Mm -hmm. um, but also she uses impressions in her pottery, so when she glazes over, the impressions oh, catch yeah. some of the glaze, and it's just a nice little accent. She does beautiful, beautiful work. Mm -hmm. um, she's someone also who, we know a lot of the artists, but I've been to her studio in particular in Peninsula, which is also in a little stall barn. Um, the energy there is really, positive, really nice, very calming. She's a wonderful person and she'll actually be in the gallery here in October um, for our gallery hop on October 4th. So if you get a chance to meet her, she's lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it says like she has over 40 years of, of experience and you can really see like the care and detail that goes into each piece that she makes. No question, no question. It's a, a lot of our artists, it's a labor of love. And this, you can tell very much from Carrie's work that that's a big piece. Uh, this is a studio uh, that we've worked with for many years. She's out of Chicago. Uh, she's been um, working for over 40 years as well, actually. Um, her work is with um, metal and um, crystal. Her color colors are really beautiful in her pieces. Um, she's had several um, generations of work and you can kind of, uh, a lot of people collect her pieces so you can kind of see how she's gone from whimsical to a little bit more modern in her interpretation and influence as well. And then you said like she names her pieces too, is that right? She does yeah. name her pieces. I kind of feel like it's an, a kind of an OPI type of thing so you kind of really know what her inspiration was for her piece yeah, and like that's really that. fun. It's yeah. more of a personal touch. And exactly. you can see like the way the light catches on everything is just gorgeous too. Yeah, I mean they stay sparkling forever. Mm -hmm. The crystals are four sweet crystals and they're beautiful. Yeah. So. Yeah, all right. And then if we move on to here, we have um, some more of the glass pumpkins that we were talking about before. Yes. And then the artist that makes the hummingbirds before um, that we saw, 
Makes these angels as well, is that right? Yes, that's correct. She's out of Canada again. Mm -hmm. um, she hand blows everything, and it's her use of color that I think makes her pieces yeah. so compelling. It's mm -hmm. it's simple, but it gives movement to her piece, and you can kind of see with the red and green, it just swirls around the shape. It's like so one movement. It's beautiful, yeah. Very, very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then we have these pewter pieces, is that right? Yes, so that's a really popular artist for us as well. Um, that's hand-cast pewter. Um, her pieces, in this particular instance of what we're looking at, is framed. She does offer them also just as single pieces. Um, her inspiration is religious in a lot of cases. Um, this one particularly is for weddings and marriage. Um, but she does other pieces with homes and stuff, and she signs every piece that's framed, and she also writes a little uh, inscription on the bottom. Yeah, like the two does, and then perfect union. Yes. I think that's really sweet. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then moving down here, we have a bunch of olive wood pieces. Right, so again, utilitarian, but beautiful. Um, this is olive wood, as you mentioned, and the pieces actually feel really nice in your hands. Um, this artist um, was trained in France, so um, I'm glad to be able to mention that. Um, brought his talents back here, and he lives in California. But as a cook, um, you know, it's always nice to hold a piece that feels as nice as those do really um, when smooth. you're working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that that rolling pin is a favorite of mine, actually. And that shape is actually a French French design uh, for the rolling pin for pastries. Oh, yeah. So yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for showing me around the shop. And right now we're going to go down and see how some of the bags are made here since they're all handmade. Great. So now we're in sort of the back, um, back room workshop area here with Scooter, who is the shop dog, right? Yes. Yeah, so we like to sort of feature Scooter because he was a rescue from the Summit um, Possibilities uh, Rescue, which is now Summit Rescue. Um, he was great. We got him when he was about three. And just nice to kind of mention to everybody that yeah. he can sort of come to work with you. He's a rescue. He um, is, is so appreciative and loves everybody. Thinks everybody comes in the store to see him, actually. So, so yeah. that's nice. I love all the local feels and touches you guys have here. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to see the process of making the bags that Standing Rock has. So do you want to explain a little bit about what the bags are? And of course. So um, we make... Um, hand make our bags, uh, hand sew our bags. Um, I, we mentioned a little bit before how much work and effort goes into the pieces that are in the gallery. And so we like to match that as well as we can mm -hmm. with wrapping beautifully. Um, so we do sew all our own bags here at the shop. Um, we get our fabric wholesale and we make our bags to fit the items. We wrap it um, beautifully on the way out. So you, once you buy a, an item, it's ready to give. Yeah, I like that idea. Established in 1988, Kitchers Glass was started by a husband and wife team 
The studio is now run by their children. This hot glass studio is located in Ontario, Canada and specializes in hand-blown glass that carries a sentiment with each piece. The designs run through the glass as well as on the surface. Some pieces look like they have trees growing inside them. The other orbs are made by Luke and he has known he was an artist since he was six years old. When he was in college, he began working with glass and the rest is history. He has his own studio in Boston where he makes glass pumpkins, hearts, starfish, and globes. Adam is a local artist from Peninsula and has had his pieces at Standing Rock for many years. He makes copper wire sculptures of animals, sea creatures, and trees mounted onto crystals and rocks. After a trip to Glacier National Park where one of his journals completely fell apart, Isaac went to work creating a leather journal that would be virtually indestructible and therefore able to withstand all of his future adventures. Along with two of his best friends, he started a studio dedicated to making journals that bring back American craftsmanship. Some of his journals bind handmade paper and others have replaceable paper pads. The journals in the second row are made by Rebecca, who started as an artist from a young age. Graduating with a degree in studio art, she's inspired to make pieces that remind people of the ones they love. Her journals are made with handmade paper and she uses inspirational quotes from famous writers to capture a sentiment with each journal. Made by your fiber artist in New York, each piece is meticulously hand-knit. There are no shortcuts when a garment is hand-knit, you won't see anything like it in the big box stores. Using original designs and soft organic yarns, each piece is handcrafted to make the most special baby gifts. Thank you so much for showing me around the shop, behind the scenes, meeting the dog, and thank you to you guys for joining us on this visit. So I'm Yeji Kim. I'm Dina Boyages. And hope to see you next time.